Do you know what the third brightest object in the night sky is? If you said the International Space Station, you're absolutely right. And the coolest thing? You can sign up for a special service and you'll get a text every time the ISS is traveling over your location. And if it happens at night, you can see it with the unaided eye. But be quick, because the station is very fast. It moves at a speed of 5 miles per second and circles our planet every 90 minutes. If you moved at such a speed, you'd be able to make a round trip to the moon within a day. At the same time, the ISS isn't the fastest human-built object. This title belongs to the Parker Solar Probe that travels around Venus and the Sun at a speed of 430,000 miles per hour. On the bright side, astronauts on the ISS see a sunrise and sunset 16 times every 24 hours. The International Space Station is a true record-breaker. It's the largest human-made object in space. It's 357 feet long from end to end, which is about the same length as a soccer field. It also weighs about 450 tons. Eight spacecraft can dock at the ISS at the same time. The working and living space of the station is bigger than a six-bedroom house. Astronauts have six sleeping quarters, a gym, two bathrooms, and a beautiful 360-degree view bay window. And now, let's imagine what your life would be like if you were an astronaut on the International Space Station. Now, for one thing, you'd be able to do some cool things there like throwing boomerangs. Once, an astronaut threw a boomerang inside the International Space Station, and it returned to him. So, just remember, as long as there's some air, even weightlessness won't stop you from having a bit of fun. On the ISS, you would never have to deal with disgusting smells. There's a specially trained person who smells everything astronauts take with them to space. It's done to protect them from unpleasant odors. The thing is that you can't really air the room out there if you don't like how it smells inside. That's why NASA is very careful about what kinds of smells are allowed to pass through. You'd also have to get rid of your clothes instead of washing them after each use. To bring a mere one pound of load to the International Space Station costs more than $10,000. That's why it costs less to throw your clothes away when they get dirty than to waste water on washing them. While sleeping, you'd have exceptionally good airflow around you. Otherwise, the carbon dioxide you'd exhale would form a bubble around your head and you'd get oxygen deprived. But what would you do on the ISS? Most likely, it would be space-related research. Astronauts on the station not only explore the possibility of future space travel, but also conduct all kinds of studies and explore the effect of microgravity on the human body. Oh, and speaking of microgravity, people often think that in space you experience zero gravity, hence the weightlessness astronauts feel on the International Space Station. But that's not exactly true. Gravity is one of the most important forces that exist in the universe. Thanks to it, the Moon can orbit the Earth and the Sun doesn't float away from our home Milky Way galaxy. But astronauts on the ISS experience not full-fledged but microgravity, which means very small gravity. Earth gravity on the International Space Station is only around 10 to 12 percent weaker than the gravity on the planet's surface. But astronauts are constantly in free fall. The spacecraft, the people inside, and all the objects aboard keep falling forward, not down, but around our planet, following a specific orbit. And since they're all falling together, the crew and the stuff inside seem to be floating. That's why astronauts can move things as heavy as hundreds of pounds with their fingertips. And even though microgravity is often called zero gravity, they're very different things. Anyway, on your way to the International Space Station, you'd be wearing a bright orange spacesuit. Its color is called International Orange, and it has the same shade as the paint that coats Tokyo Tower in Japan or the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. But once you reach the vast expanse of space, you'd swap orange for snow white. See, the thing is, the orange suit is equipped with the stuff that can help astronauts survive if something goes wrong during the launch or landing of the spaceship. For example, a regular pumpkin suit has flares, medications, survival gear, a radio, and a parachute. As for the white bulky spacesuits, those are EVA, which stand for Extravehicular Activity Suits. Their purpose is totally different from that of the orange suits. Astronauts put on EVA suits when going on a spacewalk. 
Such an outfit can protect them from the unfriendly conditions of outer space with its extreme temperatures and the near vacuum. Besides, the white suit can prevent small debris from hurting space travelers. Oh, by the way, if you needed to scratch your nose while wearing your EVA suit, you would use a patch of Velcro inside the helmet. The lack of gravity also makes sneezing inside a spacesuit a serious problem. If you absolutely had to sneeze while on a spacewalk, you'd have to bend your head downward and sneeze into your chest. Otherwise, your visor would have to be equipped with tiny windshield wipers. Now in space, you'd often see random flashes of light, and those wouldn't be hallucinations. Cosmic rays hitting your optic nerve would create such an effect. You don't see similar flashes here on Earth because the magnetosphere doesn't let cosmic rays reach you. Before going to space, you'd have some underwater training. It's supposed to simulate zero gravity, but in fact, it has nothing in common with being in outer space. So the main purpose of this training is to see how future astronauts can deal with extreme environments. Oh, and later, during space adaptation, you might feel, well, let's say, weird. Around 50-75% to 75 of astronauts have highly unpleasant symptoms, such as vertigo, headaches, nausea, and overall tiredness. Luckily, everything usually gets back to normal within 72 hours. Before you were chosen to fly to space, you'd have to get through incredibly tough competition. According to NASA, they accept only 8 applicants out of 6,000. On top of that, the selection process takes around 18 months. Now, if you felt homesick on a mission and started crying, your tears wouldn't flow down your face. Instead, they'd gather into thick blobs of liquid around your eyes because the water surface tension would hold your tears together. You'd have to remember to attach yourself to something before falling asleep. Otherwise, you can easily float away from the spot where you went to bed and bump into a hard surface. That's why astronauts usually rest in sleeping bags in a small crew cabin. Another issue you'd have to deal with would be taking a shower in microgravity conditions. And it's not an easy feat. Astronauts use a shower in an enclosed cylinder which keeps water from floating away. They use a no-rinse shampoo, spray themselves with water to rinse off the soap, and finally use a vacuum hose that pulls inside all the water left on their body. You'd have to get used to a dramatic change in your diet. You'd have three meals a day, nothing outstanding here. But instead of sitting down to enjoy your lunch, you'd float around. Your meal would consist of some dehydrated and canned food items. And it might take a lot of time to finish it, since you'd have to be very careful not to let your food get away in the process. Now, imagine needing a haircut. After all, you'd spend no less than half a year on the ISS. To change your image, you'd have to use special clippers with a vacuum attached to them. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.